Stacey Abrams made an interesting move with Michael Bloomberg, and it turns out the New York City mayor has the same amount of staff as Bernie Sanders. We are back with Kenesha Grant, assistant professor of political science at Howard University, and Gabby Orr, White House reporter at Politico. Let me just start with Bloomberg overall, right. because okay. I really think that people are underestimating how much impact he could ultimately have in this race. Look, do I think he's going to be the nominee? No, although I would say that I think he has a more plausible path than many of the candidates that get discussed more often. However, anyone who is willing to spend limitless funds is already staffed up to, what, 800 yeah, staffers, 800. has the largest organization of any of the campaigns. Yeah. You have to take this person seriously. I think you do, and I think this is one of the things we learned in 2016. Donald Trump is the kind of reality TV president. Mm -hmm. He has the money. Well, not the money, but yeah. he has the media influence, the media buy to get mm -hmm. his face out there repeatedly all the time. Right. And so I think Michael Bloomberg can buy that in this election. Bloomberg has a thing. It's called Bloomberg News. Yes. It's has. literally yes. Bloomberg News. <laughs> and it covers the exists. election. And that's part of the crazy thing. I mean, I, the news just broke this morning from Politico. Michael Bloomberg has 50 just comm staffers. <laughs> comms. Some of them don't even have states assigned to them yet. They're getting paid exorbitant amounts of, of money, Gabby. And this is the thing. I mean, he has he has been able to build out a massive professional campaign infrastructure in a very short amount of time. Eliza Collins of the Wall Street Journal pointed out that the Sanders campaign has a similar number to Michael Bloomberg. And yet that, you know, that just shows you what the battle is between a grassroots funded campaign organization and one just wholesale paid for mm -hmm. by the world's ninth richest man. Well, and Bernie Sanders has been in this race now for going on 16 months, yes. maybe longer. Yeah. Uh, Michael More Bloomberg like 40 has years. Been in right. Yes. right. Yeah. Bloomberg has been in for about three. Yeah. So to have 800 staffers, I mean, that's a staggering amount of staff, um, so much so that he probably doesn't even know where to put them at this point. No, he doesn't. And yeah. I think he's his he is figuring that out. And one of the things is the quality of his staff. Mm -hmm. um, just based on our reporting at Politico, I know that there's a number of former Obama administration officials people who worked for his campaign who are now joining Bloomberg's team, whether it's because they're getting paid more than gold, uh, Goldman Sachs staffers, I don't know, but <laughs> it, it, it is certainly attracting yeah. some top talent. And yeah. if he can guarantee that they're being paid through the November election, regardless of even if he's in the mm -hmm. race or not, then um, that's an attractive offer and yeah. something that I think is really going to give him right. um, a, a leg up in this race. Well, and Kenesha, part of why you can't take him for granted is things like what we're seeing now with Stacey Abrams where he yeah. had given $5 million to her, her organization, which is doing great work in terms of voter suppression, but now he's appearing with her. Right. So, and we saw this with the mayor who he had given funds to this, and then he, the mayor endorsed him. So, yeah. look, that money has tentacles throughout the country, throughout this town, throughout media, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and this photo with Stacey Abrams is one that everybody wants. Yes. He's going to get that. Today. Not even Joe Biden can get a can get a Stacey Abrams photo op, but Bloomberg can. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think that uh, the, the donation is great. Like, let's register yeah. people to vote. I support that wholly. But I am kind of worried about this this and whether it's going to turn into Were you an endorsement to see I I was frankly yeah. surprised. I know she's talking about wanting to be the vice president, but I thought that she would be a bit more traditional in her approach and I think that to uh, make this move where she comes out standing next to him is interesting, but I understand doing it because you want to keep your organization running. But if it turns into an endorsement, I'm going to be shocked. Frankly. But that's part of the issue is that Bloomberg gives everybody money and has for 25 years. That's one of the things journalist said Jelani had highlighted on this show is that the amount of money that Bloomberg has just tainted everybody by giving it to them and their acceptance of it has made it so that, A, they can't really criticize him, Gabby, or they can, but then they'd have to say, well, yes, I took Bloomberg's money, but it's like, remember when all the candidates had Trump's I'm money and say, they had to say, they're like, well, you know. It reminds like, me of yeah. something. Right. Yeah. It's the same exact situation. And it just shows, I think, the root of money in, you know, through the nonprofit donations, the Bloomberg nonprofit has sponsored thousands of politicians and forums and all these other things, and they don't want to lose access to that. And at this point, I mean, if, if Bloomberg does well on Super Tuesday and, and Elizabeth Warren doesn't do well in New Hampshire and Iowa and South Carolina, there's no longer going to be a candidate in the race who can plausibly uh, go after Mike Bloomberg for yeah. the way that he is campaigning, the yeah. way that he is sort of buying support from right. people um, with credibility. I mean, Elizabeth yeah. Warren isn't, isn't fundraising in the way that other candidates are, and so she would really be the one candidate who can launch yeah. that 
that attack. I mean, Sanders very much yeah, good. It's Sanders good well. too. But yeah. I, I just I think that he's he's really doing something that shouldn't be underestimated yeah. uh, at all. And right. Kanisha, meanwhile, because he's not taking any donations, he's not going to be on the debate stage. So there's no accountability. You know, most of these candidates are scrambling yeah. to get on the stage. Right. I want to see him on the stage. Mm -hmm. I want to see him challenged by the moderators <laughs> and by his fellow candidates. But what is what do you think that in his mind he believes the path to be? What is yeah. he betting on here? I believe that he thinks he can circumvent the whole thing. If I I watch network news in the mm -hmm. morning, I know those media slots are very expensive. He's been on for months. Mm -hmm. And so I think he's betting on me and my mom or whoever else watches network news he's in the morning. He's buying the Super Bowl ad, right? Yeah, I think that he's betting that those folks will hear the message over and over and believe it because they heard it over and over and not kind of test him or uh, try mm -hmm. to figure out what's beneath the surface and will vote for him just because they know his name. Yeah, and that's the thing is, Ryan Grimm actually called this one of the most natural political science experiments, which is how much support right. can you just buy? Mm -hmm. Just flat out buy. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's no real coherent ideology behind the Mike Bloomberg message. It's just like it's kind of a, techno a technocratic outlook on the yeah. world. And with the way the way that Crystal is pointing out is that look. So say that it comes out of South Carolina and it's a mixed bag between like Bernie and Buttigieg and Joe Biden. Well. Every delegate at that point counts, and a massive campaign operation, let's say Bloomberg caps at 10 percent. 10 percent is a lot, yeah. and that's actually drawing from many of the different pools that Joe Biden or a Buttigieg or even a Warren would be able to have. I do have to say, it could actually be good for Bernie. That's what I said from the it very beginning. It could hand Bernie the nomination. It, this could be the thing. Right, and so then at that point, the establishment would be like, Bloomberg, drop out. Right. Like, you're yeah. screwing us. What's going on? I, I mean, what do you make of this whole situation? I don't know what to yeah. make of it, and I, I think that we're really going to have to see how the first three yeah. um, primaries go to determine whether or not he actually has a viable path forward. Mm -hmm. Because if Mike Bloomberg finishes, you know, last in, in Iowa, New Hampshire, he, I don't think he's even registered there, actually. He's not. No, I he's think not. Yeah, he's not. Um, it, there, but yeah. if, if he doesn't do well in Super Tuesday, then I think this, this entire experiment is over. Yeah. Um, he really has to overperform expectations then. Otherwise, there's really no argument. Um, no matter how many votes you think you can buy, no matter, no, no matter how many endorsements you think you can get, because of how much you're paying people, if you don't have the grassroots support behind you, it's going to be really difficult to make an right. argument that you can ultimately beat Donald Trump. And right, right now, that is the most important thing to yeah. the Democratic That doesn't mean party. he won't affect the race. Yeah. And that's the thing. And I think he's betting on a Biden collapse. Yeah. Like Biden really, you know, gets fourth in Iowa and third in New Hampshire or whatever. And there's a collapse and the establishment goes, Oh my God, we've got to have someone that's not Bernie Sanders. Mike Bloomberg, he ran a city, he's competent, he's got all this, let's just throw in with him. I think that's the calculation that's going on here. I think so, and I think it's a bad calculation. I think that in 2016, we ran on a not Trump, not Trump, and it wasn't hopey, changey, feely. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, get excited about it. And he might have a lot of staff, but I have seen staffers show up in, I'm from Florida, seen them show up in Florida and not care except about the check. Yeah. And you put that staffer next to the Bernie staffer who actually cares, mm -hmm. the volunteer who actually cares, and I think the outcome will be different. I think the same is true for voters. You want to get me excited about Mike Bloomberg, and it might not go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think the main thing that Bloomberg is buying is the ability to swing, if there was a broker. I know there's always, you know, that's the fantasy, yeah. but I, maybe it's more likely this time around than ever before, and if that's true, what did he just buy himself? A whole lot of delegates, the ability to swing the race. I mean, it's essentially taking, you know, the backroom deals of the old days in the convention, and then just buying a of the 10% of the vote that you want, and you can swing it whichever which way, that's a kind of a troubling thing, right, in a democracy, where he could just be like, no, you're going to be the nominee. And he yeah. could just pick it, Gabby. And he's doing it all so, so shamelessly. I know, yeah. Just, <laughs> Which yeah. is the most surprising thing, yeah. I think, to me, because yeah. of where the Democratic Party is right now, because of the influence of the progressive base, um, uh, you know, talking about money in politics. To have a candidate like Mike Bloomberg that we're even talking about right now in this context um, is just mind-boggling. Who is still for the Iraq War. His aunt, he was a Republican who was on yeah. the record of for many years saying he doesn't support a minimum wage. I mean, that's who we're talking strange, about here. So, strange ladies, situation. great to have both of you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Tomorrow on Rising, Congressman Ro Khanna. He explains more about the House's vote on limiting the president's war power in Iran. And the Hills editor-in-chief, Bob Cusack, will be in the House. We hope you have a fabulous day. We'll see you back here tomorrow. See you tomorrow.